Hi everyone, this is the Armatan Marmot and today we're going to be taking a deep dive into the vibration and resonance behaviour of this frame. Loads of you have reached out to me on Reddit and YouTube asking about whether I can do a video on an Armatan frame because certain Armatan frames have a reputation for being very noisy, very vibey frames. So today we're going to take a look at a black box log from a flight with that frame. We're going to compare it to the results of a finite element simulation of the frame. And we're going to see if we can answer once and for all what's going on with the Armatan Marmot. All right, so here we are looking at a black box log from the Armatan Marmot frame. In fact, this is a flight that I took just earlier today. And as I scrub through it, you can see immediately that all is not well with this frame. There is an awful lot of, uh, of oscillation in both the roll and the pitch axis, even a little bit on your as well. So if we jump into the, uh, the analyzer view, oh, wow, I mean, I mean that's, that's a lot worse than I was expecting, actually. Um, so there's an enormous, an absolutely enormous peak at 250 hertz on roll that just, I mean, it, everything else just pales into insignificance compared to the size of this mountain. Um, I guess also for, for, you know, completeness, we should also say that there's a bit of a, um, a peak going on at maybe 370 hertz. And there's a few other little things going on at, at lower frequencies. This, this spike here, that could be prop wash. That's in the prop wash frequency range. Um, I'm not sure what these are. They're pretty small. So really on roll, it's this main huge resonance peak that we need to be uh, paying special attention to. If we look at pitch, okay, so in pitch, there's really a lot less going on. That uh, enormous spike that we saw at 250 hertz doesn't seem to appear at all in pitch, which is really interesting. We're gonna have to dig into why that is later on. But um, there's a little bit of uh, noise, maybe around 200 hertz. But that could, I mean, that, that could be a resonance. This this peak at uh, about 320 hertz, that looks like a, a, another frame resonance to me. If we look at your, I mean, there's not uh, there's not an awful lot going on in the in the your traces. Even if we turn up the gain a fair bit, I mean, it's mostly green along here a little bit of stuff going on between between 200 and 400 but that could honestly just be because of the, the resonances in the other axes okay so before we go and look at the resonance simulation let's take stock we've got a few different modes that we need to be looking for there's one really big one in the roll axis at 250 hertz and the second slightly smaller one at a higher frequency about 360 hertz then if we go and look at pitch again we've just got one real frequency to look at in the pitch axis and that's at about 320 hertz something like that so now that we know what we're looking for let's go and have a look at the resonance analysis so this is the mode shape for the 250 hertz vibration that we saw in the roll axis that really huge huge resonance spike and you can see here that, that this is quite an interesting resonant mode because it's entirely mediated on the roll axis you've got the battery rocking uh, from left to right and you've got the the motors moving up and down in concert with that and it's creating this completely unique mode on the roll axis and we see no no pitch dependency at all and so that matches really well with what we saw in the black box log where we had this huge spike on the roll axis but nothing at all on pitch so this mode is another mode that i think is interesting and may contribute to that um, roll resonance that we saw in the black box log although this mode shape doesn't have any roll dependence at all you can see that the, the flight controller is just moving up and down it's not swaying from side to side the frequency of this mode is really close to the frequency of that rolling mode 
and that provides an opportunity for the two modes to feed off each other. And that can, you know, if you've got a bad mode and you've got another mode that's not particularly bad but occurs at a very similar frequency, that can help amplify the effect of the bad mode and you can get a much larger resonance spike than you would expect because of the way the energy can transfer between the two modes. And the final mode that we're hunting for is this pitching mode that we saw um, in the black box log. It occurred at about 320 hertz and um, I think this is the mode shape that's most likely to be responsible for that. It occurs at pretty much exactly the right frequency and um, you can see that you, you get a, uh, a rocking forward and back on the pitch axis, but no roll at all. And that matches with what we saw in the, in the black box log, that we see this spike on the pitch axis, but we see absolutely nothing on the roll axis. Okay, so now we've identified the mode shapes for all the resonant frequencies that we saw in the black box log. Let's look more closely at each of those mode shapes and try and work out what aspects of the design of the Marmot frame are precipitating these problems and these resonances to occur and how in a, a different frame design you could potentially mitigate against them. So let's start with the most important mode which is this rolling mode from left to right and I think the key issue with the, the design of this frame that's precipitating this, this problem with this resonance is the relatively long distance of unsupported top plate that we have. You know, there's a big length that's being bridged from the, the front cage to the, the midpoint standoff. Now, typically in a, in a more traditional frame design, you would see two standoffs between the camera cage and the, the rear standoff in the frame. And that would provide a lot more stiffness to hold that battery steady and stop it from rocking to the left and to the right. Another aspect of the frame design which could be improved is because it's got this solid bottom plate, Armatan chose to use four millimeter thick carbon here. The width of the arm, you know, which is really, the uh, Marmot has a really wide arm, isn't really helping very much here because adding more width doesn't provide that much more stiffness in, the, in bending in this plane up and down. In a bending mode, extra millimetre of thickness makes an enormous difference because the second moment of area increases with the cube of the, the height in that dimension. And lastly, let's look at this pitching mode. Again, it's really clear that it's the bending stiffness of the arms up and down that's of vital importance here. So I think this point bears stressing that a wider four millimetre thick arm is not actually as good for resonant performance as a narrower, thicker five millimeter or six millimeter arm. And I think what we see here is, is this frame really suffering from having wide arms, but relatively thin arms in comparison to other frames which have narrow arms, but the thickness of the carbon is much greater. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you found it interesting. I hope that you feel that you learned something about the Armatan Marma and also about choosing a frame in general. You know, what, what are the things that you're going to be thinking about when you're picking your next frame to make sure that it's gonna give you good noise performance, good vibration performance. You're not going to have issues with, uh, with filtering and that sort of thing. I've also been working in the background on my own frame design, where I've tried to take everything that I've learned from simulating many different frame designs and combine them all together into a frame design that should have really excellent vibration and resonant performance. If you're interested to see what that looks like and how it performs and how it works and why the design is the way that it is, um, subscribe and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. In the meantime, happy flying.